Hello people! We have another exciting tutorial for you guys today, as always, and today's tutorial is on how to change the system font on El Capitan. Uh, first, I just want to apologize, my voice sounds a little bit raspy, I'm feeling a tad under the weather, so that's why it might sound a little bit different. But today I'm going to show you guys how to change the system font on your Mac, and the reason why a lot of people are looking to change the system font on El Capitan is because El Capitan is the first version of OS X to use the San Francisco font, which is the font they use on the Apple Watch. And a lot of people don't like it because it's a much thinner font than previous fonts used in OS X. This tutorial is going to be on how to change that, and it's actually a very simple and easy process because we don't need to touch any system files, we don't need to disable SIP or anything like that. But it generally is a good idea to back up your Mac anytime you're going to be making some sort of big change like this. So go ahead and back up your Mac. And once that's all set, the next thing you want to do is find a font patcher. And there are tons of font patchers out there right now. You just find a font you want, Google search patcher at the end, and it should come right up. So I actually have one right here. It's on GitHub, and this is for Lucia Grande, which was the previous font used in OS X. Basically, what you want to do is once you find your font patcher, you want to go ahead and download it, and I actually already have this downloaded ahead of time. Once you have your font patcher downloaded, you just want to go ahead and open it up. And then you want to click through and click yes to any sort of notifications or license agreements or anything like that, terms and conditions. And then eventually you'll be brought to pretty much an automated process. A lot of these patchers will do the work for you. This one happens to have a button not only to patch and install, but to uninstall if I wanted to revert back to the San Francisco font. A couple of them don't have this uninstall feature, but they will tell you how to manually uninstall, which is just deleting a couple files. So this one's nice and simple. We just need to click patch and install. Enter in that admin password. And then all you need to do is log out or restart for the changes to take effect. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I've just finished rebooting my Mac and the changes have taken effect. They might be a little bit hard to see to the naked eye. So I have some screenshots here that I'm just going to flip through that will hopefully show you guys what the difference is between the two fonts. So this is San Francisco before and this is what I'm using now, Cita Grand. So if we just kind of go back and forth a little bit quickly, you guys can definitely see San Francisco is a much thinner font. And you guys are probably saying to yourselves, Matt, that's fine, that's Danny, that's great, but what happens when I can't find a patcher for the font that I want? How do I do this manually? And the process for that is a little bit tricky. Essentially what these patchers are doing is that they're renaming the font files and the metadata attached to them to match the naming convention that OS X is looking for with its system font files. So OS X uses true type fonts and those font files are basically small databases of glyphs with some metadata attached to them that sort of explains uh, how the font is used, where it's used, the sizing, all that sort of jazz, and then it copies them to the library fonts folder. Now, this is not the default system folder. This is the user font folder. That's why SIP doesn't need to be touched, and that's why this isn't that big of a change because as long as this user fonts folder is going to take priority over the system font folder, we can just put those font files into there. So if you wanted to use a font that's already sort of system-like, like Helvetica or Arial, then all of the metadata that needs to be changed should be present in the files. It's just a matter of finding the right program to change that data, and I'll have a link in the description below to a program that you guys can use to change it. But if you wanted to download a font from like a third-party site like defonts.com or something, let's say you wanted to use uh, Lee Gothica, then there might be some missing metadata that can't be changed and that could leave you with some display errors. So things might not be displaying correctly, things might be squished together, the sizing, basically all the jazz that is defined in the metadata might not be present when you implement this new third-party font. So just a word of caution before you jump right on it and changing the system font. But if you decide to completely ignore that warning and you do run into problems or any issues, you can just leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to try to help you guys out. But that will unfortunately bring us to the end of today's tutorial. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. But other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and take care.